Hi, this is Scott from Chino Basin Water Conservation District here in the WaterWise Community Center's public park planting to continue our series of what to expect certain popular native species to look like during the summer and into early fall. It's been super hot here. We've just got through a record heat wave a couple of weeks ago. And today we're here to look at brittle bush in Celia farinosa. It's one of the sunflower family, very popular California native shrubs for the garden. Although this semi-dormant native species is not at its aesthetic peak in the summer, in the spring it is beautiful and covered with all sorts of yellow small sunflower flowers. So there's a lot to love about this in the garden, but today we're here to talk about what to expect in summer. As a semi-dormant species, what you will usually find with perfectly healthy brittle bush is that the newer foliage the leaves towards the edge of the plant will still remain looking pretty good throughout most of the summer, but what is completely normal is for the bottom part of the plant along the older stems to largely wilt and many of the older leaves to shrivel and fall. So here you can see exactly what I'm talking about. There's going to be small amounts sometimes of newer growth lower down, but this is completely normal. This is not at all a sign of stress on the plant. If you want to, you could reach in and kind of clean some of these off a little bit, but the vast majority of people don't. This is just part of the seasonal leaf turnover of the plant as it matures and gets larger. With younger plants of brittle bush in the garden, you might not see as much of that because there's just simply much less older stem material. And so it might look more like this. And if your plant is during that establishment phase where you're watering it once a week for the first year, maybe year and a half, you might not see any of that at all. But certainly as your plant gets older, more mature, you're watering it less, maybe once every three to four weeks, or even less than that, expect to have some of that leaf dry out and leaf drop. This also might have an implication of how we want to maintain brittle bush in our gardens over time. As the leaves fall off of these older branches, you will in the fall get some amount of leaf break off of the little nodes along the stems in the fall. But as the plant continues and continues to age, it is very common for them to get sort of woody or stemmy closer to the base to where more and more of that foliage is just held out on the edge. Not everyone likes the aesthetic of that, and especially if you're in a garden that is watered regularly, the plants are going to grow really quickly and then look somewhat leggy. If you want to avoid that leggy look over time, there's a very simple way you can do that. When you reach the early fall, you will often along the branches see the tiniest little bit of leaf break coming off of the nodes. And when you see that starting to happen, right now we are in the first week of fall, you know that it's time to give it its hard cut back. And you can cut these back quite hard, down to about a foot or so, maybe even a little bit lower. You don't wanna cut it all down into very thick older wood, but by cutting it back every year, every other year quite hard, you're going to avoid having to cut back into a real large diameter branch, and you're going to stimulate lots and lots of new growth every single year. And in fact, this nice compact plant was cut down to about this high last year, and we're going to do the same year after year to keep this thing growing beautifully and blooming beautifully. Strategically, you can use it in the landscape where it's going to look okay when it's cut back because there's going to be other plants that are not cut back around it, or you can just roll with the seasons, cut them back, know that the plant's going to be healthy and respond to it well, and move forward with confidence. Brittle bush is one of those special California native plant species that in most gardens, once it's very well established, can be grown with no supplemental irrigation water at all. We can pretty much let this thing go dry and it will be just fine. And that makes sense compared to where we see it in habitat, which includes some really, really dry, exposed, true desert slopes. This thing is tough. This brittle bush is one that gets no irrigation in our park. Another lovely thing about brittle bush is that if you allow the seeds to develop in the garden, not only will birds come around and eat them, but it will come up here or there, usually pretty lightly from seed in the garden. And if you want those plants to be able to grow there, you can just let them do their thing. 
And so this area at the very edge of our park planting actually gets no irrigation. And here's what you can see you'll be in for with that situation. It follows the same pattern where the growth at the very tip of the branches does look pretty good. This plant is still photosynthesizing and doing its thing, but the semi-dormancy is just quite a bit deeper. You can see just much more of the kind of tired leaf look along the edge, but it's going to respond the same way in the fall, and you can prune it just the same way as you would otherwise, even if you are not irrigating at all. Be very careful if you're trying to grow it unirrigated, if you planted the plant from like a one gallon plant, it's going to take in most cases a few years to really reestablish a robust root system that can support that in a native garden. But one of my favorite things about allowing seedlings to grow is that that root system just grows in kind of completely in its natural robust form. You're not having to reestablish it from the nursery pot kind of situation, which means they are going to be ready to be grown with no irrigation at all quite a bit faster. Sometimes you can just let the seedlings do their thing. If it's a drought year, maybe give it a little water with a hose. But if you are really into just embracing the natural cycles in your garden, brittle bush is a great candidate for complete naturalization. Now on the flip side of that, someone might ask, hey Scott, can I just water this thing more and really keep it looking fresh throughout the year without having any of these wilted older leaves? And the answer is yes, you sometimes can, but if you continue to water it on the high end, maybe every other week, or especially if you continue to water this every week in the garden, what you are going to see happen is that the plant might be a little bit too happy. And what I mean by that is it's going to grow really quickly. It's going to get almost excessively large, could be pushing five feet tall, maybe eight feet wide, larger than you would read a brittle bush is supposed to get. And the disadvantage of all of that growth is that it's going to be kind of weak. Brittle bush, well, not one of our most pest prone native plants. Most native plants have very few pest problems. When it is getting that extra water and has all of that tender growth can be a bit susceptible to aphids and to scale bugs, as well as mealy bugs, which can be aggressively ranched by Argentinian ants. If you grow them with less water, following our general every three to four weeks, giving it a deep soak guidelines, or letting them go completely natural with almost no or no irrigation water, you are much less likely to see that. The other thing that happens is that those plants after a few years, being that large, tend to get extremely leggy at the base over time anyways, and the taller that plant is, the more of those exposed branches that you do see, which means you're just going to have to be cutting it back that much more, and it becomes more of a management issue than it's worth if you over-irrigate brittle bush. If that happens to you, if you think that you maybe pushed it too far, don't worry about it. You can just kind of slowly cut back that irrigation water it's receiving, give it its hard cut back in the fall, and kind of recalibrate from there. So, brittle bush, beautiful native plant that will go semi-dormant in the summer, know what to expect, so you don't need to stress much more information about brittle bush and many of our other favorite native and waterwise plants at our waterwise garden planner website online and many more plant profile videos coming on our youtube channel so be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to see them all